Hello, um, I'm very, very happy to be in Spain. First, it's much colder than in Riga. You wouldn't believe. And uh, it was plus 32 almost whole week in Riga. So when I came here, I saw that it's much cooler. So I'm very happy first. But of course, more happy. I, I'm uh, happy to meet my friends. Javier, Raul, Alba, and Laura was uh, here. And every time when I come to Spain, I get more friends. And uh, <clears throat> becoming kind of half Spanish, even no Spanish language skills. But uh, like Javier said, of course, APA is uh, much more than just sports science. And I will, I will discuss in my presentation. I'm very jealous, actually, you have a team in my country where I come from, which is a small country uh, comparing to Spain, um, we don't have such a team as you have here, uh, professionals uh, of uh, different universities. In, in, in Latvia, uh, actually, my university is the one who is uh, uh, providing a study program in adapted physical activity. And actually, not even a study program, but also uh, courses, study courses, which are embedded in a sports science program. For example, for um, uh, sport teacher, sport coach, recreation specialist, sport manager. Uh, especially for sport teachers, we have a two credit course, which is about inclusion in physical education. We have a one credit course, which is about adapted physical activity. And uh, in healthcare programs, we have a, a physiotherapy in a bachelor level, where we teach also at least four credit courses for physiotherapists about adapted physical activity as part of rehabilitation. And uh, in a master level, as you can see, we have even a, a master study program, adapted physical activity in rehabilitation, when we teach physiotherapists uh, about uh, health-related uh, health sport activities, health-related physical activities, because sport and physical activities uh, uh, like terminolo terminology issue, sometimes when we say sports and people say, no, no, I'm not uh, into sports. But when you explain that it's not actually high uh, performance sport, it's not competition, uh, then of course, again, it's a perception of terminology, which is also diverse in the different countries in different, uh, in different uh, societies. So I will discuss a little bit of that as well in an international perspective. Uh, so I mentioned about my country. So what we have in the European level uh, as a representative of uh, European Federation of uh, Adapted Physical Activity, of course, I'm very eager to see whether there are international study programs because of mobility of students, mobility of professionals we have in Europe. Uh, it's very important that we share our knowledge not only in a national level, but also in international level, so that we know how things are going in uh, Spain, in, in Portugal, in, in, in uh, Germany, in France, or in, in Latvia, or in Sweden. And that's why uh, I'm very happy that we have few international programs in European level where students can meet, where professionals can meet as well and share their knowledge. Uh, this is historical uh, program, probably many of you know, it's an international master in adapted physical activity where I was actually part of, and I know Javier was, and uh, Raul and uh, Alba was also a student in uh, MDAPA at that time, or it was different, MMAPA. In my time it was MDAPA, it was 96, 97, when I was uh, studying in that program. And, um, and it, of course it's, uh, fantastic experience and it gives you a lot of, like you said, Javier, inspiration and opens your eyes that adapted physical activity is not just for uh, something special like people with disability or children with disabilities, that it's actually for anyone. And uh, then I'm even more happy about this program we have in Finland, which is a 90% practical uh, intensive study program ad about adapted physical activity uh, for students coming through Erasmus Mobility uh, agreements and they join a 
our colleague Jurki Vilhu, fantastic person, uh, enthusiastic about um, uh, APA in jail and APA for people with disability. Again, there are new uh, perspectives of activity uh, regarding uh, inclusion, regarding adaptations. And also uh, one more program which I learned recently, European Master in Health and at Physical Activity, which is run by um, University in Italy. I'm not familiar with that. Maybe some of you have heard, and maybe you know people, but uh, this program is uh, more related, like in my academy, with a health perspective in physical activity. So uh, on national studies, why we are, uh, we actually are kind of in a challenging position as a European Federation because uh, uh, as I talked to colleagues uh, during a workshop that you go to sports science conferences, you meet people doing adapted physical activity, you go to physiotherapy conferences, you again meet people doing phys adapted physical activity and any conference you go related to physical activity you meet somebody whom you didn't know before but they are doing adapted physical activity uh, research programs and and providing services so it means that we are so interdisciplinary we are so diverse of course it's not possible for us to come together in one organization. Actually, we don't need to be all in one organization. It's even better that we, I think, we make us stronger if we are participating and representing APA in different organizations. Of course, it'd be great to know each other better, and that's why I'm very happy to travel to uh, different countries and meet with people uh, I didn't know before and tell what we are doing in the European Federation. So there are more and more national studies uh, this, uh, developing, uh, providing uh, adapted physical activity programs um, uh, in a different uh, uh, context. For example, my colleagues in Lithuania and sport universities, they have a bachelor in adapted physical activity, which is mostly related to physical education in special schools. Uh, while, for example, in uh, Ireland, uh, where we have Ireland, uh, Tralee, they have a master's degree in adapted physical activity in, in, in leadership. Yes, and uh, again, there are different content-wise programs, and I think it's even better that we don't have strict uh, frame where we have to be fitting in all of us that we have this possibility to go from one colleague to another colleague and students can travel from, another, from one country to another and learn about a, 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 this uh, wide uh, perspective and wide scope of adapted physical activity. And uh, yeah, there are even more study programs. We don't know much about France, but I'm sure there are study programs in France in adapted physical activity. Uh, so, about Spain, so what do you know about Spain? Probably more than me, but what I found uh, in uh, statistics, and actually today I was supposed to be in Lithuania, in Kaunas, uh, for defense of uh, one of our colleagues, friends, Diana, uh, you know Diana Ural, uh, she's rector of Lithuanian Sport University, and, and I was a reviewer of her PhD student. But science invitation from Javier came earlier, so I said, okay, I'll be in my mind in Kaunas while I will give my presentation in Madrid. And uh, her student was uh, actually defending uh, great research about self-efficiency, and I will also touch this topic a little bit because I know that you have done a great job in creating new programs, in-service teacher programs and student uh, teaching programs uh, related to self-efficiency efficiency skills of, uh, of uh, teachers in physical education regarding adapted physical activity. So you know statistics in Spain probably better than me, but uh, there are actually interesting statistics I found uh, which made me think a little bit what is going on in our countries. Uh, this about about this uh, age range, students with an official decision of special education needs. And I don't know what is exactly special education needs in Spain, how they are 
defined, probably you know better. And, but you see that there are not so many um, percentage of children uh, comparing to, for example, Lithuania or even Norway, Estonia, Latvia is here, uh, pupils who are defined with special education needs. But which is uh, uh, more surprising is that uh, many students with special education needs are included in general education. And these data are very interesting because in Sweden, if we think about uh, Scandinavia, which is a pilot and, and pioneer countries regarding inclusion, uh, children with special education needs are mostly are in a, a special education schools. And actually, I was in Finland uh, two weeks ago giving a workshop in a special school for children with severe and multiple disabilities. So again, I don't, uh, this gives me a thinking, uh, who are children with special education needs? And maybe children with special education needs in Spain are not the same as children with special education needs in Sweden. And again, it, of course, it's a national context, but we are working in the one family, and when we are going to different conferences, we are giving research outcomes about uh, inclusion children with special education needs, but actually what we know about these children and what is our understanding about special education needs probably is completely different. So again, that's why we have to meet more often and discuss what are children with special education needs in Spain, in Sweden, or in Denmark, or in Finland, or in other countries, because the terminology probably is very, very different, of course. The same as with people with disability. So despite of international consensus on the rights of students with special education needs, there are challenges in many countries regarding developing support system in education institutions, for example, teacher assistant. I don't know in Spain if you have assistant uh, physical education teacher in a physical education class, if you have 30 students, and then there are two students with autism or two students with a uh, ADHD or with uh, intellectual or learning disability, whether there are teacher assistants in the physical education. In my country, for example, there is teacher assistant in a class, but when it comes to physical education, they don't know nothing about physical education because they are taught in special education study programs how to provide support in a classroom arrangement but they don't have any idea how to provide assistance in a dynamic and very active environment as a physical education gym. So involvement of um, uh, like adequate uh, teacher training, ensuring uh, continuous improvement like you are doing with um, in-service teacher training with the different programs probably discussing here. Uh, of course, finances are a very important issue as well, uh, number of specialists and uh, development of services. So those are categories or components which are important to face and to meet needs of children with special education when we are talking about inclusion. So what is adapted physical activity? Probably everybody has a different understanding also about this definition because somebody says, oh, you are working only with people with disability. I said, no, no, no. It's not only about people with disability or you are working only with children with disability. It's even more narrow. I said, no, it's not like that. I had research with people with type 2 diabetes. I'm going to have research with people with cardiological uh, problems and they don't have disability label but we are providing adapted physical activity services in healthcare for those people. So again, that means that we are very diverse in, a, in a many perspectives, in a many um, uh, understandings. Interdisciplinary body of knowledge, profession. Yeah, of course, is there are countries where we have a adapted physical education professionals. We have maybe countries where are adapted sport coaches. I don't know, maybe. Uh, so maybe physiotherapists with a specialization and adapted physical activity, like in my country. An area of intervention, of course, many programs, community-based, uh, IPC, uh, Paralympic Committee maybe provides uh, special programs or national federations. 
So, of course, it's so diverse in uh, different uh, levels of uh, activities. And, uh, yeah, uh, here we can see some uh, examples starting from Paralympics and, and uh, also recreation, extreme sports, education and, uh, and rehabilitation and uh, different ways how we understand Adapted physical activity probably depends on our own experience and our own uh, uh, kind of knowledge about this topic. Um, multidisciplinary networks where we are linked together and we can talk with people from uh, rehabilitation or technologies. Nowadays, everybody wears, almost everybody, smartwatches, follows uh, applications on, a, uh, on a smartphones about their physical activity. So what about people with disability? What about children with disability? How we can promote uh, IT uh, technology e implementation in their daily life so they can follow the same kind of attractive uh, programs and applications we are following to motivate to be active. So there are so many links we should promote between professionals with different uh, background uh, to, uh, to, to contribute adapted physical activity as an area we are working in. Uh, a little bit about European Federation of Adapted Physical Activity. Uh, so as a federation, we are not very big federation, right, Raul? We are kind of, uh, mem member-wise, we are not large federation, but I think because of uh, some activities like in, uh, in next year uh, European co conference uh, in adapted physical activity in, in Spain and in Elche, uh, probably you know that, and uh, European Journal of Adapted Physical Activity, which is open source, so these are kind of over um, products, let's say, we are pr very proud of. And uh, yes, uh, making networks, which is very, very important uh, task for us as a federation now. Um, European standards and adapted physical activity were uh, made in 2010, and uh, that was very important step towards building competencies, skills, knowledge of uh, professionals working in uh, adapted physical activity, but how and if it's possible to translate those competencies, skills, and knowledge in different countries, in different study programs. Um, again, we are working together. We are making research projects. We are, I think, all of us are involved at least in one or two international projects with colleagues and uh, discussing and exchanging over, uh, over, over knowledge and experience. So, uh, definition of the profession, uh, who is, uh, like, as I understand, most of you are working in the physical education um, uh, area. That's why I uh, looked for the definitions related to physical education. Who is adapted physical educator or adapted physical education teacher? Service provider, first. So this role is uh, for planning, evaluating, implementing instructional programs, uh, developing adapted physical education plans, uh, thinking how to include children with disability in a lifetime sports, how to choose a sport during school times that the person will carry on through his life. Like, I think it's our mission to teach children to love sports and, and that they are loving sports through their life in the future. And also consultant is very important uh, task or responsibilities that we are communicating with teachers in the classroom, with parents, with physiotherapists, with anyone who is, with, uh, in, uh, has a connection with a child we are working in a school setting. And uh, so these are two very important roles for uh, adapted physical education uh, teacher. But what skills, competencies, and knowledge are required in each country in order to provide those two important uh, responsibilities. So we will come to that. Professional standards, as far as I know, uh, there are two international uh, professional standards. Uh, I'm not sure if you are planning to make any professional standard for adapted physical education teacher or, 
or professional working in the area of adapted physical education, we tried in Latvia to uh, build a professional standard for physiotherapists working in uh, adapted physical activity as part of rehabilitation. We made a standard. But uh, we didn't succeed to get through health uh, bureaucratic system because uh, it was not uh, mentioned that we sh need uh, physiotherapists who are particularly focusing only on adaptive physical activity. Like for physio physical education teacher, we are doing adaptations for not only students with disability but also for students who are below average level, because we need to adapt for someone who doesn't run as fast as others. We have to adapt for someone who has more body weight than others, who is more slower. So we are doing adaptations naturally, spontaneously anyway. The same with physiotherapists. We are uh, suggesting and uh, recommending physical activity programs for person with uh, type 2 diabetes, with uh, obesity, or with uh, any other health issues. And uh, does this physiotherapist need a specific qualification? Probably no, because this is also his responsibility to work not only in the treatment, but also in prevention and also in follow-up after rehabilitation program. So terminology which comes um, in, in a physical education area is uh, also diverse across the, the world. Uh, in the United States, they have uh, APENS, uh, Adapted Physical Education National Standards, and they have adapted physical education teachers in schools providing support for general education teachers, which is actually very good, and they're also providing consult, uh, consult, uh, uh, consultation for physical education teachers. In United Kingdom, I found they have inclusive physical education as part of a physical education program, and they are discussing about responsibilities and competencies and knowledge about inclusive physical education teacher. And also I found that there is special education teachers in physical education, which is something like my colleagues in Lithuania are doing. They have adapted physical education teacher working in special schools and uh, or with the uh, children with special needs in the general education schools. So again, we are using the different terminology, but actually we are talking about the same topic. We are talking about adapted physical education. Okay, uh, I have uh, some videos I would like to show. I'm not sure what I have to push in order to show it. Um, um, I will see if it works. Yes, OK. Uh, I'm not sure if that, so as a, well, be, before we start, I will explain. Uh, my PhD was about collaborative learning in physical education. I was, my background in physiotherapy, and, and sometimes I'm thinking who I am more when I'm teaching my students. Am I a physiotherapist? Am I a physical education teacher? Am I a coach in athletics? Which I also was qualified when I graduated Academy of Sport Education. Because when I work as a physiotherapist, I always think how I can promote skills for child, for example, with cerebral palsy, he or she can use later on in physical education or in a gym or in a uh, outside in a playing uh, ground, uh, playing some sport uh, together with his siblings, with his friends. And uh, for me, always was important long-term goal to see this child in an environment he's surrounded with friends and how he can use these skills I'm teaching as a physiotherapist he can use his skills playing basketball, playing soccer, or any other game children love to play. So when I was uh, working with children with severe and multiple disabilities, I noticed that uh, my colleagues are not focusing on skills those kids might use uh, later on in uh, outside of rehabilitation setting. And, they, uh, and, and also kids without disability are more resistant towards kids with uh, severe and multiple disabilities. And more important that, for example, in countries where we have assistance in physical education, assistance mostly is provided by adults. And you can see already in the picture that this, this boy who has severe multiple disability 
so in a way it's not point. Yeah, this one, he has actually teacher assistant and adapted physical education teacher during physical education, and there is general PE teacher. So, and goal, but they have uh, about 30 kids in the class. And you will see, maybe not in this video, they have also a child in a wheelchair, she had spina bifida, and she didn't have any adult assistant because that child was so independent and she was spontaneously always supported by her classmates that she didn't need any assistance provided by adult. So in this situation, you can imagine if for this boy, the main aim to come to physical education is to collaborate, to interact with age appropriate peers. So how can it happen if there are so many adults around, and you will see short videos, uh, uh, like baseline picture of what happened during physical education every single time. Got you covered. You high five. And it's not only because they, like, it's not because children doesn't want to play with the boy, but you understand they, they don't come close because there are two china wall <laughs> around this small kid, and of course there's a psychological hierarchy. Or another type of uh, example I can show you where there was a child who had uh, intellectual and physical and uh, and uh, cognitive uh, challenges, uh, but she was enough smart to know how to avoid participation in physical activity. And her goal was not to do physical activity in order to get out of this environment. But of course, for her, it was very important to be in this environment where she can learn new skills. But since she had these cognitive issues and, and intellectual and physical limitations, she was very resistant to learn something new. So what happened every time when she was rebelling or avoiding or uh, kind of protesting, do something? Put on your belly. sit down because you're not cooperating. So that's what she wants. Yay! So she again sits down and do nothing. That was her goal every time when she had an adapted physical education teacher. And that was adapted physical education teacher joining her every time in order to uh, involve her in a physical activity together with age appropriate peers. He tried very good. He was involving uh, other classmates. But there was no really going this uh, kind of nice uh, collaboration. And uh, most of the time, she was just taken away. So uh, Grimm's, um, uh, he gave a kind of uh, theoretical uh, model of uh, indicators which are reflecting in inclusive education, not in physical education, but in general, in, phys in, in, in general uh, education system. So you can see uh, variables like social, emotional, peer support, parent involvement, academic indicators. So even looking at those uh, parameters, how much we can affect and impact uh, in competencies, skills, and knowledge of physical education teacher, adapted physical education teachers, those uh, components. And for example, um, we will not go through, but just looking uh, briefly on those 17 indicators, so that, uh, for example, all students are engaged in all class activities. 
Is it realistic? If we have children like this you saw in the previous pictures and videos, that all children are engaged in probably not always realistic. All students enjoy the class. So is, did you have, uh, or your, your students, or when you had, uh, even in your classes when you have students, all students are enjoying the class? Yes, no, maybe, depends, yes. Um, all students have access to appropriate health services as necessary, okay, it might be not so related with the education. School creates a school environment which supports all students' learning. This is very important. Because there's nothing to do with the physical education as a one subject among many others. If we promote, if we encourage our students to include children with disability in physical education, but in a mathematics, in a reading class, or in a chemistry class, inclusion is not happening, then how we can say that we are doing inclusive education? Probably it should be some uh, system or some uh, uh, model in schools which are promoting inclusion that affects inclusion in every single subject, in every single class. Uh, so uh, some more examples uh, which was important to address. Um, I have quite a lot with you actually in my example, in my video, in my presentation, since I knew this is a late evening and you had active Day, so I'm not going to show you sophisticated research, analyzed data. I will mostly uh, refer to videos um, we have collected through my studies. So you can see picture which was totally opposite after we implemented peer tutoring. And what happened in this uh, small group interactions after we changed those two adults with two children? So looking for the mouse. Okay, it's here, and... You just hold on to Bryce, okay? And you don't be landed. You just saw passing kid in a wheelchair. She was assisted by two girls. See difference? Like here, difference? So what was different between this picture and, and previous video you saw? So there was a uh, lot of smiling, a lot of laughing. Uh, kids came close. They were like pretending they want to touch uh, or catch. They were playing a catching game with these big noodles. And uh, physical education uh, adaptive physical education teacher, he was following for safety issues. And I said, you don't come close, you just keep like two meters distance from this uh, peer tutoring um, uh, group and uh, not uh, make any distractions. Let they do what they do. If they, in case they fall maybe, it's okay because it's the movement is not so far, they don't uh, injure themselves. And uh, at the some point, actually, uh, phys uh, not physical, but the uh, teacher assistant actually didn't come to gym anymore because she said she, she has nothing to do. Because children were around this boy all the time and they were having a uh, lot of uh, interactions, support, natural support spontaneously without any like suggestion or uh, initiation. Uh, a short video, it will be in Swedish, I don't understand Swedish, but you can see from subtitles, uh, we made similar study on uh, collaborative learning in Sweden. And in Sweden it was a little bit different because in uh, uh, United States we were selecting students in a class. We just asked uh, volunteers who wants to be peer tutors. But of course we also wanted to see what happens with other children when they see how trained peer tutors are providing assistance. In Sweden actually ethical committee uh, told that we should not 
select or ask students to uh, vo uh, like volunteer for peer tutoring because then we will indicate that because of peer tutoring intervention, there's a child with disability and he needs help. So in Sweden, they said, no, 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 you shouldn't indicate that there is child with disability. So you have to find a way that you are doing collaborative learning approach without indication why you are doing this. So what we did, we uh, changed our title uh, from uh, peer tutoring to how to be a good friend. So we taught everybody in the class how to be a good friend, and everybody could know, including child with disabilities, that if somebody needs help, so I should find out how to provide help. And so uh, in this uh, video, uh, after this study, we may, they actually, my Swedish colleagues, made some video interviewing uh, students, uh, principal of school, and also physical education teacher. So we will see a very short reflection of, uh, uh, of, of uh, how they felt and how they think inclusive physical education should happen. With the teachers and group, and what we can do. Alla har olika nivåer och svårigheter som man måste nå och det är bra när en lärare kan se alla. Ingen ska typ känna sig utanför eller någonting utan alla ska kunna vara delaktiga. Först. Okej. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe was it Yeah, it will be some more ideas at least from students. Yeah. Uh, so, um, European standards of adapted physical activity, uh, we were hoping that we will make golden standard which might fit uh, needs of every country. Of course, we failed in this aim because uh, every country is so different. Uh, in some countries, uh, APA exists as a profession. In some countries, there is the APA as a profession, but... Uh, uh, they are uh, working in a, like, uh, offered by professional experience in APA. Uh, some countries doesn't have official profession uh, of APA, but uh, still adapted physical activities are provided by education teachers, coaches, or physiotherapists. Or in some countries, APA doesn't, doesn't know, exist at all, and there are uh, services provided by Assistance, like in some schools in my country, and now there are a social assistant who is helping child to transfer from point A to point B, but he is not helping in a teaching process. So again, uh, picture is very different. That's why we cannot really say that every country should reflect on European standards because of national uh, diversity regarding the education system. So how we can address uh, and how we can assess competence, skills and knowledge of adapted physical activity or adapted physical education, professional education. So this is familiar, especially for Rao probably, since this is based on the self-efficiency um, uh, components and uh, Bandura's theory. Uh, and uh, so how we can promote our students so who will be future teachers uh, that they uh, see this interaction between person, behavioral outcome, and sometimes outcome actually is not even related to sport uh, or physical education outcome. Maybe outcome, like in previous video, is to inc improve, increase interactions between child with and without disabilities. Maybe it's a uh, uh, outcome which is more focused on psychological or an emotional wellness of child in a physical education class. So not always we should focus and tell students that you have to improve physical skills, motor skills. Uh, uh, sometimes it's really collaborative skills. It's uh, understanding differences, which will be really important outcome of physical education. Because this is an environment where you can see those individual differences and uh, most uh, comparing to classroom in performance. So in major sources, self-efficiency information, uh, which is a very personal experience for every teacher, for every person when interacting with this person with disability. So there is 
components like performance accomplishments, which are related to participant modeling, performance uh, desensitization, performance exposure, self-instructed performance, or vicarious, uh, vicarious experiences, life modeling, symbolic modeling, verbal persuasion, or emotional arousal. Of course, every day we feel different. We are coming to school, we are very upset for something, or we are in a good mood. It also impacts our uh, attitude to things which are happening around, and probably the same for PE teacher. And uh, so, basically, a learning process based on social cognitive theory by Bandura, where there's an interaction between person, behavioral environment, so personal factors, which are cognition, affective state, self-efficiency, uh, linked with the environmental factors, how our environment is made and if it's really appropriate for inclusive physical education, not only environment physical, but also emotional and uh, psychologically. Behavioral factors like self-regulated learning, using strategies, adapting. And uh, so basically, a lot of uh, over uh, behavior, how we face uh, inclusion, how we teach students to promote inclusion, are based on a personal uh, experience, on a personal qualities uh, each person has regarding uh, uh, maybe previous experience or beliefs that they can change by inclusion, uh, picture, and uh, quality of uh, education in general. Uh, so again, um, Daiva, uh, who is defending now, actually she probably already defended her PhD, she made this uh, very nice uh, uh, model or uh, let's say uh, uh, approach, uh, which I think very closely linked with Include T uh, programs where adapted physical knowledge and adapted physical education courses and seminars and also online adapted physical education uh, courses, seminars, are very important instruments uh, to, uh, to use in uh, promoting uh, adapted physical activity and uh, inclusive physical education uh, from perspective of um, uh, education and, and the inclusion of uh, children with disability in a class. Uh, so, yes, uh, this is familiar for all of you and probably you were part of that and uh, in Lithuania they did 18 hours of uh, online classes comparing to 40 hours of uh, in-classroom teaching and uh, so they had also a control group and uh, those who were in uh, 40 hours in class uh, Teaching had better self-efficiency outcomes than uh, those who took online class. And uh, of course we can discuss and we can uh, think from those research how and what is important uh, for over country, uh, whether online classes, whether in-class arrangements are better uh, instruments to promote inclusive physical education, knowledge, competence, and skills for over colleagues and, and, and teach and, and students. But uh, really, it's uh, great to see how this uh, self-efficiency approach is uh, disseminating across countries, because in Czech Republic, they did the same. I have done in my country, but still data are under analysis and uh, my students also have gone uh, through uh, intervention study of uh, in-class uh, adapted physical education program and they joined uh, a one day a uh, big sport event with more than 500 students with disability and they had more than 30 uh, different adapted physical activity stations providing for those participants and they had really hands-on support for those five more than 500 uh, students with different disabilities. And afterwards, they were very happy. They said, oh, we didn't know the child without legs can climb and the child without any visual uh, skills can jump and run. So that means that theoretical knowledge is not enough. They definitely need practical uh, like, uh, experience in order to understand connection between theory and practice. 
So again, a uh, little uh, feedback from a student in, uh, in Sweden about uh, teacher, and I think in this video you will hear I also like principal. Och so since uh, you don't understand Swedish, just read subtitles. And this is a visually impaired student who was running. Har ju ett väldigt viktigt uppdrag och det är ju att få alla att känna en samhörighet att få vara med. Och ju mer olika vi är, ju mer berikar det ju att man får förmånen att vara tillsammans med andra som har andra förutsättningar än mig själv. Det som utmanar våra lärare i allra högst grad det är ju just det här att ha en undervisning som passar alla i gruppen. Eh, forskning påstår ju att lärare gärna planerar undervisningen så att den passar normalitetskurvan. Det blir lite för enkelt för några och det blir omöjligt för några men den stora massan kan vara med. Och det gäller väl både för idrott och för övriga ämnen. Så utmaningen ligger ju i att erbjuda undervisning med stimulans för de som kan nå långt och stöd på ett klokt sätt utan utpekande för de som behöver det. Det är det jag tror man behöver prata med varandra om för annars så kan man inte utveckla en sån undervisning. Och att befinna sig precis i den proximala utvecklingszonen, att inte kräva för mycket och inte för lite utan verkligen utmana varje enskild elev där den befinner sig. Och det här krävs, då krävs det att man kan prata med varandra om vad det är man ser. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so uh, it's great that there is administration in school which understands inclusion. Because uh, probably in a Spain as a big country, even in Latvia as being small country, uh, with a reducing number of schools every year by seven, by eight schools, there are still schools which are not focusing on inclusion as a school-wide approach, but the, each teacher thinks how I do inclusion in my class, but there is no really big picture provided by school administration. I think it's very important that uh, not only uh, one subject teacher, but whole school has a label. We are school for inclusion. And this is very important that all school uh, learning environment, teaching environment is uh, focusing on inclusion. So, because it's very important that inclusion like goes yeah. through oh. um, all class uh, ages, all ages starting from a first grade and until uh, last year in the school. And uh, of course, because we are so different, also over perception of disability, of, uh, of uh, different uh, skills is uh, probably very uh, dependent on our experience. And uh, for some of us, disability means a medical approach. This is a health issue. For some people, uh, even teachers, even us as a professors in my academy, many of my colleagues see disability only as a medical issue. And uh, they don't see that there is a functional model or social model linked. And uh, so Raul is familiar with this uh, new term defability which was brought up by one reviewer of our manuscript and uh, and we really i like it and i have uh, told to some colleagues of mine and they had it's a really fantastic term of course it's a challenge maybe translate uh, perfect to different uh, languages but that we don't talk about disability but we talk about defability about different abilities we are facing uh, when we are talking about uh, adapted physical activity, because we have to adapt because of different ability. And uh, it's important that social model uh, is, is an, like priority or um, one we are uh, using when we are talking about uh, inclusion in, uh, in education system of children with, uh, for example, disability. So inclusion model, uh, health and functional skills, uh, which are of course priority why children are, uh, are, are kind of indicated that they need adaptations. Because they come to school, for example, with asthma, 
and there is a doctor uh, prescription that they need limitations in physical uh, activity. Or there is somebody after some long period health uh, maybe issue and they again has a physician or family doctor prescription, oh, you, he or she cannot participate in physical activity. But of course, we have to understand that physical activity is part of everyday life. It should be part of everyday life. It, it's improving quality of life. It's also friendship. It's a joy. It's, a, it's a, like being together with friends. When you ask children, uh, what is a sport for you? You probably will not hear children answering, oh, it's improving uh, my uh, physical conditioning, it's improving my uh, uh, fitness skills or, or physical skills. It's mostly for children being together, having fun, uh, enjoying uh, being on the sports field with others. And uh, it's very important that we are not limiting those values of life uh, when, uh, for example, saying, okay, if you have doctor prescription, you cannot participate, then you go just sit down in a, a library or you just sit down on a bench and watch others. So that we should discuss with parents, with uh, maybe consult with physiotherapists and how we can improve and, and, and include these children in a physical activity together with others, that they are falling in love with sport, with physical activity, and they take this message of physical activity as a lifetime participation. Um, so, international classification of functioning, just probably for you it's also familiar, but this is one we using a, a trans, um, like um, uh, professionally, not only in um, not only in uh, rehabilitation and healthcare, but also in physical education, in education. Uh, so we have, uh, this is actually uh, by our colleague, Shaike Hutzler, who is well known uh, adapted physical activity professional from Israel, and he made a great article about using international classification and functioning in adapted physical activity, because we have health condition as a criteria to include somebody in adapted physical activity. But then we set up goals, objectives, assessment, what are goals for participation, whether it's in, in, in inclusion, participation, uh, being together, having fun, enjoy activity. Uh, also, uh, environmental uh, factors, which are availability of adapted physical activity programs, but we are building in a community or in a federation or in a school-based um, environment and personal factor, personal limitations, which we can overcome if we are uh, using, uh, for example, a collaborative uh, approach and we are uh, encouraging uh, children playing together and encouraging interactions between uh, all participants in physical activity program. Um, so, Again, facilitating and limiting variables in, physical, in adapted physical activity which are related with the task and activity and participation and, and the barriers facilitators which can be related to person and uh, which can be related with environment. So there are different uh, barriers and facilitators which can be the same kind of role at the same time. Sometimes they are barriers, sometimes they are facilitators. So, uh, what time do we have? We have one hour? Like, so, because we can. Yes. We, one, one minute. minute. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, actually, I think uh, uh, what we can do, we can do maybe some reflection and have some discussion and. Uh, and uh, question answer because like I said in the beginning, I, I was planning to have more like interactive approach, <laughs> but uh, so maybe we can spend like last minute while having some feedback and interactive approach. Because this slide actually is a summary what I have talked before. If we, uh, in, if we put uh, our efforts in uh, encouraging uh, any way physical activity 
in, uh, in school settings, in physical education programs. So we will probably in 20 years and 30 years avoid those problems uh, which might be more crucial and more like major problems for, for children after 30 years when they have diabetes, cardiovascular or other health issues and which will be more costly also for country. So how we can promote and how we can uh, encourage uh, children to be active. It's not only us, probably it's the parents, it's society, it's value of physical activity in the society, and how we can change, if we actually can change, step by step, those values. So any questions? You were very focused the group and Hay alguna pregunta aparte del aplauso que le vamos a dar ahora mismo a Aya, ¿se lo damos o no? Sí. sí. Right. <laughs>